Hey now, what you are about to hear is a free preview of one of this week's premium episodes of The Dumb Zone. If you would like to hear this program in full, along with the full archive, ah shit, if you would like to hear this program in full with the archive of all of our past episodes, you can subscribe at dumbzone.com. You really have to give it to Nico? Nico, man. Dude. Because just think of a few years ago, this roster, and you're like, well, they're kind of stuck where they are. Yeah. And they really weren't. Like, he totally rebuilt everything around Luca. Brick and, by brick. And remember, you know, we were upset about, you know, even the Kyrie trade. You had to get rid of, like, Luca's buddies. Like, yep, oh, and man, picks. How's this going to work? And they were backed into a situation where they had to give a max contract or close to a max contract to a player who nobody else would have given that to. Kyrie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, at the time. Yeah, so you made the deal, and it's like kind of like now with KP. They yeah, for sure. I mean, he's he's putting up wins for sure. So, And you saw it last night with, with who gave him minutes. I mean, heck, he didn't draft. No, he must have drafted Jaden Hardy. No. In any case, Jaden Hardy. I'm saying like who was who's was Nico was Jaden Hardy Nico's first draft pick. I believe that would be the case. That sounds right. And they've extended him and I don't know that he's all he's going to turn into anything like that he thinks he is like a 6 man of the year candidate. But he kept him alive in the second quarter with some the threes, some solid dimes, he's active on defense. Najee Marshall and Quentin Grimes are as advertised. Hell, Maxie's still on the team, and if you need him, <laughs> can hop out there and knock down open shots. That's the thing. Maxie and Powell are on this team. Yeah, and Maxie's going to they used play. to be, like, heavily dependent on. I remember two years ago, it was if we don't have Maxie, this is over. <laughs> Man. Like, we we can't defend anyone if we don't have Maxie. And now it's he's, you know, he was off the bench earlier than I thought he'd be. Um, He came in... With Najee. Uh, then Luca didn't play the whole first quarter like he normally does. Checked out with about four minutes left. And then you had Kyrie, Grimes, Grimey, Marshall, Maxi, and Lively. And they, you know, I still think it's weird that they're dead set on starting Gafford. But if the minutes end up the way that they were last night, sans, you know, the garbage time, so be it. No, I, I think you nailed it. They just don't need offense in that starting unit. So why don't you just yeah. get you know big rebounder down there saves li- save Lively's minutes? I thought the rotation was pretty solid last night. Yeah, I mean Lively played twenty eight, Gafford played nineteen, and the game was effectively over. You know because Powell played a few minutes as well, so those would have gone to Lively. Um, and then just I mean, what can you say about Clay, man? He's still Clay <laughs> effing Thompson. Dude, it was great. He doesn't. He dribbled more than I thought he would last night. Like, he was coming off screens and trying to get in the paint, which, you know, fine. Every but, now and then. But, but that's the bit is that he doesn't have to do that now. No. And, yeah, obviously it was great. I mean, <laughs> um, the – the play you're going to see all year, right? Oh yeah. The the Luca and Luca does this every game with just highlights, just something whether it's cocky Luca or something, you know, the one that was the behind the head pass to PJ Washington. God, I love PJ. He PJ came. also loves PJ. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> kind of only want him taking corner threes. Which, you know, he's going to give you a night every now and then where he scores 25 cuz he goes 6 of 9. But he'll definitely take some. He'll definitely take some shots early in the clock on you. I mean, it was funny. Uh, the ESPN Clutch Show that I've been referencing. His he's from here, obviously. So and his dad was his coach, PJ Washington Senior, and so he's heavily featured. And he's definitely a coach, basketball dad. My son's an NBA player. And the game last year was Oklahoma City, right, where PJ couldn't miss. Mm-hmm. And that combined with the game where he didn't play well, but then did hit those free throws at the end when Shea fouled him in the corner. And it was, uh, you know, his dad was, I don't really think in his mind he was being facetious. He was talking to the ESPN cameras that are falling around. He's like, hey, they got a big three in Dallas now. 
You're like, what? Um, <laughs> it's two we got two, and your son's playing well. Lively? But he's like, hey, man, they got a third scoring option. I'm like, I think he's like eight points a game for his career, so let's – Let's not get ahead of ourselves on how much PJ offense we need, but still, yeah, that I th- and really the other one reference from last night would be the one in the early fourth quarter where Luca just started back up the floor when K- Clay was open. That's the big one that you're going to see over and over. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's so cocky. Yeah, it's so cocky, and uh, it's so great. Here's uh, here's Luca on that. Oh, hold on. He's got. There's another question in here, just saying he didn't play well. You mentioned Clay's defense. Uh, yours was pretty noticeable out there as well. What were you feeling on uh, on that end for the, for the impact you were trying to make? Yeah, I mean, I played terrible. Uh, but you know, it's the energy. You know, the vets pick up me, Clay, and Kai. You know, we're the vets of the team. I thought that was cool, by the way, too, because I still don't think of him as a veteran player. Luca? Yeah. Yeah. You're seven. But in my mind, it's like, oh, he's still a kid. You know, the other day, I was surprised when I saw he was 25 even because he just plays like a kid. And I don't know, when I heard him say, like, yeah, the vets, me, <laughs> had to pick us up. Uh, but, you know, uh, big energy. Uh, my first game in, what, four months, so I was tired. One of those threes you hit Clay on, he's wide open on the wing. As soon as you pass it, you just start running back. But what, what are you thinking there? I'm thinking it's going in. Simple. Uh, he had so much time, he had to take one dribble, he told me. so. Uh, but like I said, playing with him makes my life easier, so I'm, I'm happy. Obviously, if it's a one-point game and, you know, he's yeah. not doing that, he's yeah. but crashing still. the boards. But still. Do you have Clay on that? Yeah. There's uh, This is playing with Luca and that one shot. I know you've had a few practices with him and a little pickup ball, but – uh, playing with Luca, kind of, how'd you feel about that fit and about some of the looks that uh, that you're getting off his creation? I mean, it was great to be out there with Luca. Uh, what a incredible talent! I mean, doesn't make any sense because what we're taught growing up, as far as being the best basketball player, is you got to jump the highest, you got to run the fastest, but. Somehow Luca defies that. He plays at his own speed and he manipulates the game as good as I've ever seen anyone do it. And it's great to be a recipient of that and get great looks. Um, hopefully we can elevate each other's games and our squad. And it's a great start to a long year, but it's something that we can build off. Now, that one, you were so open, you kind of took a little dribble. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on there? Um, it's something I've done in the past and I've done throughout my career. When you're getting ready to shoot the ball and you're that wide open, sometimes you overthink it. So it's nice just to take a crowd dribbling. That that, that just gives you a lot of rhythm. And uh, it's, uh, I, I heard Luca was running down the floor, though. But uh, I'm happy I made it, made him, look, made him not look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that is a classic ghost tour laugh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was funny, but <laughs> <laughs> no, those guys are wait, waiting for them to say something halfway funny. But I liked, uh, I really like the addition of Clay. Obviously, the perspective he has to everything. Like, did you hear him on the post game uh, on the floor interview? TNT. I did not. And it was kind of like. He was tempering it all. Like, hey, this is good. It's a good start. We've got some pretty big goals. So it's it's a night like let's all – it wasn't too excited. Like for what he's been through already, you know, the highs, that the as high as you could ever get, you know, they were in a dynasty. It's like he knows, you know, that's – he knows the long-term goal and not to get too high, too low. Like he's obviously not a too high guy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No pun intended, because I... <laughs> okay, yeah. I do think he's, yeah. He like. might be high all the time, but, you know, it's just like he's very even-keeled and like, look, I'm not... We're not getting too excited about this. Yeah, great game, fun, um, but we, we got bigger things to do. Yeah, you, I mean... I, I mean, you'd have to... You'd have a tough time right now coming up with another duo. 
have to think about this, but that has a more calm demeanor of playoff experience than Kyrie and Clay Thompson. Yeah. I mean, those guys and have, two guys who are also used to being in the universe of a, a big, yeah, Steph. A, a huge, yeah. yeah, not just like a star or a pretty good player, like a real mega, mega star, and how to play off of that and still get theirs. And like it's all. Again, it's great to play San Antonio game one, I think. A lot better than if you played, you know, Boston or something like that. But I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that would have been great to to beat Boston. Every, everything's great right now, though. Yeah, and we'll see what Phoenix is. Um, that's who they have next. But I don't know. I mean, it's really – they're going to take a lot of threes, and they have a lot of guys that can hit them now. Uh they're going to scramble like hell on defense, and they have a lot of guys that can do that now. I mean, Lively last night, I mean, there's him and Wimby. This gives me chills, man. Like, that's a – we're going to get to watch that for a long time. Yeah, I think the broadcast said it. Yeah. Look at the next decade here. Doing Chet, and it's like, geez, dude. I mean, he's – whether it was the – he had a pass last night that was crazy to an open three. Uh he locked down Wimby on one time. They're going back and forth. He can obviously he's getting more comfortable with touch in the paint. Even if he's missing him, I don't care. It's the fact that he thinks he can take him. And then you go to the bench, and Grimes and Marshall are super solid role players that you know have a little attitude and can shoot it. It's hard not to really, really like what they have going right now. And they're probably not going to be a good defensive team, but I don't think they'll be bad. They're a, <laughs> they're a fun team, for yeah, sure. I just worry because, you know, last year they make the finals and you think like, okay, well, this is their floor. But it's not. No. I mean, even in the, in the post game, Clay said that the Mavs peaked at the right time last year, and that's true. I mean, they were – parts of the regular season, they were not a good team. But my Mavs fandom qualifies that by saying that was not their team. Yeah, you're right. Because – it was the getting Gafford and starting him, getting Gafford and then eventually starting him, plus PJ, which gave you a more defined role for Derek Jones, plus more time with Kyrie and Luka together. I mean, they went like 16-2 and two yeah. before they packed it in for the final two to rest for the playoffs. So if they really are a team that can win 60-70% to 70% of their games with the roster they had last year that made it to the finals, and then you take out, uh, Josh Green, Tim Hardaway, <laughs> and add in uh, Clay, Quentin Grimes, and Najee Marshall, and Spencer Dinwiddie if you need him. But it's an, it's a very natural thing in sports to just assume you'll no, have yeah. you know, the same year you did last year because you got better. Yeah. And that's just not always the case I mean, because a lot of things have to go right. I mean, that's a making the finals is incredibly tough. They could have been bounced by the Clippers. Yeah. And. So I don't know. I, I want to enjoy this regular season, enjoy the team, and not put you know these massive expectations on them. I mean, their projected win total is lower than it was last year. Lower than what they won. They won 50 games. And they're mostly at like 49, 49 and a half right now. So, yeah, I mean, it's... But I also think part of that is the West is so good, the teams are going to just destroy each other. Yeah. But it's it's fun times, man. Really fun times. So about Clay, I have a couple pieces here. I didn't know this, um, and I didn't know if you did either, Jake, but apparently he used to drive a boat to games. Dude, Captain Clay? Oh, yeah. He's boat guy. Big boat guy. He would drive – he would take the – when they were, you know, in Oakland, he would take the boat from San Francisco to Oakland. That's crazy. Or his own boat. Yeah, a question in the postgame is like, do you miss driving the boat? And he's like, ah, you know, that was a cool time in life and – Maybe I'll get on the water here, but <laughs> it's not the same here in Dallas if you're looking to drive a boat. Yeah, no, he we, we've been making jokes about that, like on the Mavs thing I'm doing and on Twitter and on D Magazine articles. It's like, maybe he'll like Lake Louisville? As long as he doesn't hit somebody? Yes, Dennis Rodman once. Bachman Lake? Lay like Joe Poole, perhaps? Yeah. You want, yeah. But no, he's he's boat guy for sure. He's also and and I think he got that name during his uh rehab not like uh addiction. <laughs> you know, he's been hurt 
for like two years at a time. And people are like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm just on this boat all the time. <laughs> He's also a paper airplane guy. Did not know that. Didn't either. And we got a pretty good ghost tour reaction to this, too. Like, Making a paper uh, airplane there? Or? Oh, yeah. Just have the U off right. <laughs> Thank you. So while people are asking him questions, I cut it off before then when I was listening to him. He's sitting there. You know, they always have like a stats page in front of him. Right. He's just sitting there, just folding it as people are asking questions. And then finally, someone says, "So uh, you making a paper airplane? Like, making a paper airplane there? Or? Oh yeah. Just have the U off right. <laughs> Thank you. Fastest like seven seconds." That cracked me up because it's like every 11 year old, like, what are you doing? Building a boat? Yeah. Like, he's just kind of defensive, like, seven seconds. No. <laughs> like, what's. <laughs> if people, like, if Mavs fans obviously know who Clay is and you know what he's capable of, and, you know, this 60 points, 11 dribble game to me is still, like, the most important or the most impressive thing in an NBA game ever when he had 33 and a quarter, 60 in a game, and he dribbled the ball 11 times. But I don't know that the average Mavs fan knows what an absolute weirdo that guy is. I didn't. Like, he's low-key hilarious, and I don't think he means to be. <laughs> he's a very strange guy. Thank you. Fastest? Seven seconds. <laughs> sounds like Napoleon Dynamite. I know. <laughs> oh, seven seconds. Uh, I listed that up front. <laughs> seven seconds. Seven seconds. So then he gets up and throws it. All right. For takeoff. Oh, look at that. That was. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. One guy that's not funny. Just got to keep him healthy. Yeah. Or healthy by yeah. the end of the season, you know? Yeah. Him and Kyrie. Uh, Jay Kidd. Not that funny. <laughs> Considering it was uh, Clay's first game and everything he did, not only offensively, but rebounding and also playing defense, was that about as good as you could expect him to play? No, I expect I'm, I'm, the bar is high. He's a future Hall of Famer. We, I, I got to see the night where he's perfect from the floor. Um, and I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think uh, <laughs> just, just absolute crickets. Uh, what do you, no, I said, uh, oh, and I'm just kidding. Um, oh my no, I, God. I think, uh, <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> that is, uh, that's that sounded like a politician, you know, when they try. Yeah, it, Jeb Bush has to give the please clap. Yeah, this is Antonio Brown just waiting for the the laughs. This clip is nine years old, and this is when we had young Clay, uh, and the Warriors were first turning into the machine that they were. Um, do you remember when he was very entertained by this question? On sports. All right, last one for you. Defensively, you're out there working hard. You want to be known as a two-way player. How much do you feed off of the D? <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, um, I pride myself on my defense. I hate getting scored on more than I like scoring. So, uh, you know, it's fun to play against young guys like Wiggins who have all the time in the world. <laughs> he couldn't handle feed <laughs> off the D. <laughs> I like it. The dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up.